Hi, my name is Brian Herskowitz, and I'm pleased to be speaking to the Return Gum Short Film Festival about screenwriting. I'm the author of Process to Product, which is a practical guide for screenwriters. I've taught screenwriting for a long time with UCLA Extensions and Boston University, and I'm a writer, producer, director. And I want to talk a little bit about screenwriting in general and the concept of how do you create the best piece of work that you can create. And first and foremost, you have to understand screenwriting structure. One of the things that is sort of a truism of screenwriting is that movies and stories move forward in short scenes filled with conflict. Uh, conflict is what allows us to root for a character, watch them overcome their, their trials and tribulations, and without that, the audience isn't really interested. So the first and foremost, you want to come up with a concept. What is my story about? And there are three elements that go into that. First is the premise. What is the story about? And for example, if we look at a film, a very famous film like Jaws, which is a story about uh, a police officer, a sheriff who lives on a small island. Uh, he's water phobic and there's a shark off the coast that's eating people. Very simple storyline, that's the premise. What's the concept? The concept is how do we encapsulate the story that we want to tell? What, what is the type of story we want to tell? For example, Avatar. Avatar is a story about, at its core, it's a sci-fi story about Americans going to another planet, um, uh, taking part in the displacement of indigenous people. But that harkens back to America's imperialism and our displacing American uh, Native Americans, you know, back 300 years ago. So this is not a new concept. But how did they encapsulate it? Well, they encapsulated it in the concept of it. instead of it being cowboys and Native Americans, it is now Avatar. It's the the Navi seven feet tall blue people. And when they put it in this kind of concept, now suddenly we are interested in this story. That's concept. The other is theme. So theme is what is the argument you're making? So in, for example, Avatar, the argument is, is America or our people right to impose upon indigenous people and destroy their livelihoods and lives? And the answer is no, of course. But that's the theme. So you've got theme, concept, and premise that all go together to help you build the first bone of the skeleton of your story. So once you have that, you want to set out and think about what is my beginning, what's my middle, and what's my end. And literally take those three steps and write them down. So uh, if you look at a film like Rocky, which was a very famous boxing film, it opens with Rocky, who's a down-on-his-luck fighter, who really doesn't know... Uh, how to make a living. He's, he's working as a leg breaker for the mob. And suddenly he's given the opportunity to fight for the heavyweight championship of the world. So that's the opening and then the inciting incident, what changes the story into a new direction. And then the third thing that happens is we say, what is the middle? Well, the middle is he's training. He's putting together his allies. He's putting together his team to train for the world championships. And then, of course, the end is the actual battle. What happens in the ring? How does he do? Does he win? Does he lose? How, does he end up learning something about himself? And in that particular film, again, he comes to the, this understanding that he can't really win. But if he is standing when the last bell rings, he's accomplished something spectacular. So those are some of the elements. So once you have those three elements, you have the beginning, the middle and the end. Now you can start to put together those pieces in between each of those steps. And one of the great concepts that I want to impart to you is the idea of, uh, of a character having a, a need and a desire. There's the need, something that's internalized, something that they don't necessarily recognize. And then there's their desire. What do they want? What are they going after? Um, a great example of this kind of a story is in a love story where oftentimes you have somebody who is uh, with the wrong person and they're in love with somebody else. But there's this person there right next to them that they don't see yet. So what they want is they want this 
ideal person, this, this physical beauty. And what they need is that person that fulfills who they are as a human being. So that's that need versus desire. When you build stories, having a strong desire and a strong need help you create conflict. Because if I know what a character's need is, now I can put an obstacle in the way. And that obstacle stops the forward motion and causes this, the, the character, the main character, to choose a different path, to figure out how am I going to get to what I want. And I'm going to give you an example. And this is an example that's also in my book. So you have a character who is in love with a girl who's inside of a club, a nightclub. And outside the nightclub, there's a bouncer. Now, what this guy wants is he wants to be with this girl. In the immediate, uh, in the immediate moment, there are two things happening. There is the overall goal I want to get with that girl. And then there's the immediate goal. I can't get past this bouncer. So I have to have a plan that allows me to get past the bouncer. So the first thing that happens is you have a character who says, I'm going to try and, and, uh, and pay the bouncer. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to bribe him. And the bouncer takes the money and then says, thanks a lot. No, you still can't go in. Now he's lost his money and he still can't go in. So now he's got to come up with a new plan. And there may be another obstacle. He decides he's going to go around to the back of the bar and sneak in through a window. And he goes and he opens the window and he climbs up on some crates and he starts to go through the window and there's a big guard dog right inside the room that attacks him. And you see how this starts to escalate. And that's the other thing that I want to talk to you about. Stories move forward in escalations. You don't want to repeat the same emotional moment over and over again. You want things to get to, to become heightened. And in order to do that, you have to increase the pressure on your characters. So slowly but surely, over time, the character's feeling greater and greater pressure. And one of the things that you do this is you, the other thing that's really important in this is what are the stakes what is it that the character has to lose or has to gain if he succeeds or fails? Um, you know, in action pieces, it's life and death. In, in bigger action pieces, it may be, for example, in the Marvel Universe, when you talk about Endgame, you have characters who are literally not just fighting for their own lives, but they're fighting for the lives of the universe, not even, not even a world, of all worlds. So... When you take a look at that kind of a thing, that stake is so high that it, it puts a lot of pressure on the characters. And as they move forward and attempt to win, fail, attempt to win, fail, attempt to win, that pressure increases on these characters. We, as an audience, we start to root for people when they are behind. So the greater the pressure, the more that the person is suffering to get to the goal the better off it is. So let's go back now to this idea of beginning, middle, and end. And in the beginning, middle, and end, we have those three elements. So you start with that so that you know exactly where you're going to end up. You know how you're going to start. And you know basically what that middle moment is going to be. For example, Rocky training. Now we're going to see what happens between those moments. What happens from point one to point twelve. And these in my book are called the 12 guideposts. So first we create the world and the universe of the story. So Avatar is very different from Rocky, which is very different from Silver Linings Playbook, which is very different from, um, you know, uh, uh, any other film. So you have to look at what is the story? What's the universe of the story? Is it a realistic story? Is it a, is it a cartoon? Is it fantasy? Is it sci-fi? What's the genre? And what is the universe and the world around it? So even if it's sci-fi, it could be sci-fi set today. It could be sci-fi set a hundred years ago. It could be sci-fi set a hundred years into the future. What is the universe and where? Is it an urban setting? Is it a desolate landscape? Is it something that you can um, identify as our world specifically. So for example, a courtroom drama. Most of us know what happens in a courtroom. We've seen television, we've watched shows, we understand that this is how things go in a courtroom. So 
when you build a realistic story, and let's say it's a courtroom drama, you have to understand, you have to do the research about where is this story taking place? What is the universe? How, how am I capturing the essence of reality without it actually being real? So once you've created the world of your story, now you want to introduce your main characters. And as quickly as possible, you want to find out who our main character is and who their opponent is. Who is the person that's going to be fighting against them? Uh, whether it's uh, Thanos in the Marvel Universe or the woman you, you're in love with in a love story. You have to figure out who is the opponent. So we introduce those characters and we start to, to set up what is the incenting, in, inciting incident. What is it that happens that if you took that moment away, the story couldn't proceed? And I'll give you another example. If you're looking at Romeo and Juliet, William Shakespeare, at the beginning of the story, Romeo is in love with a woman named Rosalind. And he's walking by a party, and he goes into the party, and he sees Juliet. Now, if that moment hadn't happened, if he hadn't walked into the party, if he hadn't seen Juliet, the rest of the story can't take place. You have to have that moment. That's an inciting incident. He sees this girl. He falls madly in love with her. Now he's off to the races. So that's the inciting incident. Then the story starts to take a turn at some point. In other words, a character has a certain belief or a certain way of living life, and something happens that takes him in a new direction. That is the act break, or the hero's, the beginning of the hero's journey, either one. Um, hero's journey is, is uh, a theory that has been created by a gentleman named Joseph Campbell. If you're interested, you can look up Hero with a Thousand Faces. And Joseph Campbell's theory on storytelling was that there was one story through histories told over and over again with all the same elements jumbled together over time. So now you have, you have your opening introduction to the world, introduction to main characters, your inciting incident, and your act break, which sends your character on a journey. So, for example, going back to Rocky, Rocky starts out as a leg breaker. He's a bum. He's not making a living. He's making 38 bucks for winning a fight. And now he gets an opportunity to fight for the heavyweight championship of the world. So the inciting incident of that, actually, is when the, the opponent that Apollo Creed has in the film breaks his hand and has to be taken out of the fight. Now they have to find somebody new. Rocky fills that post. That hadn't happened. If Spider hadn't broken his hand, Rocky would not have gotten the opportunity. He wouldn't have a story. So Rocky gets the opportunity. But then what happens? Well, that's the inciting incident. What's the act break? I mean, the, the inciting incident is Spider. The act break is him getting the offer. Will you fight for the heavyweight championship of the world? Then the second act, once we have that act break, what moves us into the second act is his training. His gathering allies, his getting Mickey, his getting uh, the B storyline, his love story with with uh, uh, Adrian, um, his best friend Polly helping to train him, all of these different things, his running, his doing the push-ups, all the things that that go into his creating and and preparing for this competition, that brings us to the act uh, into the second act, and that second act kind of rolls over this idea of. What are the obstacles? What does he need to do in order to build um, his skill set so that he can fight and possibly win against Apollo Creed? And then, of course, we get to this third act. And prior to that, there's what, in a lot of scripts, there's what we call the, um, the, uh, the personal revelation, uh, character insight, character revelation, where character suddenly realizes some truth that he didn't know before. If it's a love story, they may go, it's not the girl that I thought I wanted, it's this girl. If it's uh, Avatar, it's um, they're gonna try and destroy the mother tree, we've gotta, we've gotta protect it. Um, in a James Bond movie, it may be, where is the bomb? So each story and genre has its own trope of how you move forward. And once you have that self-revelation, that idea of, oh my gosh, I was wrong about this, I've got to go over to that, that sends you into the third act. And the third act is the battle. And the battle can be a literal battle, as in uh, the Endgame, uh, Avengers Endgame, or it can be a, a, a kind of uh, 
more abstract battle, someone who is struggling with addiction. Uh, I'll give you another example. There's a movie called Leaving Las Vegas about a character who is struggling with alcoholism and is trying to find a way to uh, basically kill himself by drinking himself to death. And the, the problem is uh, you want him to learn that life is worth living. And he gets to that third act where the woman that he's fallen in love with is trying to save his life and she does not succeed. So that's actually a tragedy, right? Gets what he needs, does not get what he needs, gets what he wants. Characters who get what they want but not what they need tend to be tragic characters. Characters who get what they need sometimes also get what they want. In a comedy uh, like Something About Mary, you have a character who is in love with this girl and is willing at the end to sacrifice for her because he loves her so much. And when he does that, he not only fulfills his desire to be, a, uh, his need to be a better person, but also gets his desire because the girl comes back to him. So now we've got that, that self-revelation, which throws us into the end game, into the third act, into the battle. And the battle takes place where the character either wins or loses. And in the majority of, of Western films, the character wins. We, we like feel-good endings. We like to feel like the character has succeeded. And at that point, now we've got that third act ending. And then it goes into a resolution. The end of the movie. What happened? So we had our battle. We won. But now what? So again, in the, in the Avengers Endgame, you know, we have... What happened to Captain? We find out that Captain America uh, stayed back in time and, and had a relationship with a woman he loved and lived his life with uh, Agent Carter and, and everything that happened to him after that. In, um, uh, that. in Avatar, after they've won the battle, they get to watch all the Americans getting on, a, on their ships and leaving. So that's the actual end of the story. So each of these moments are guideposts. And in between these guideposts, one of the things that you start to develop is what are the actions that the character takes, how are those actions stopped, and how do they re-put uh, together a new plan to get to their goal. So the goal is always in mind. And sometimes, like I said, it's the goal is the overall goal, and sometimes there is this intermittent goal. I want to get through this door. There's a big guy in front of me. How do I get around him? But that doesn't stop the idea that he wants to get to that girl. And the higher the stakes are, the more important this is to him personally, them personally, the more the audience is going to relate. And the more, and, and the more we're going to, to feel for what the character is going through. So that's basically the, the steps that take you from A to Z in putting together the structure of a story. You have this kind of three-act structure, but it also marries very well with the hero's journey. So you have a character uh, or characters that you're following that start off in a, in a particular world with some either misconception about the universe or some missed idea. And then slowly but surely, they begin to formulate, here's what I need, here's what I want, here's how I'm going to get it. And it isn't usually until that that third act transition where the self-revelation happens, where they go, oh, I, I know I wanted that. I wanted the money, but I really need to be a better person. I wanted the, that girl, but I really need this girl. Or I, I, you know, I want to be a good soldier as an avatar, but I need to do the right thing for these people that are being oppressed. So those are the ideas and the concepts. I hope that that helps you get started. Um, again, if you're interested, a lot of this information is in my book, Process to Product. And I would like, again, to thank everybody at the Return of Gum Short Film Festival, and I wish you all the best. Thank you very much.